Hello students. In this video, we're going to look at what it means to be in the span of a set of vectors. And along the way, we'll talk about the notion of independence, what it means to be a basis, and what the relationship between these concepts and linear systems of equations are. And I'm just going to do it in a very, the very simple example of, two, of a R2. Okay, R2 space. Um, so we just have uh, two vectors here. Okay, so we have a vector u, which is 2 minus 1, and a vector v, which is 3, 1. So I claim that u, v span all of R2. Now, what that term may seem strange to you, and you may wonder what does that mean. So what I'm saying is that any vector in R2, let's call the vector a, b, I'm saying that it could be written as a linear combination of these two vectors u and v. Now you might be wondering, well that doesn't seem very convenient, what about the vectors 1, 0, 0, 1, right, the i and j vectors. Yes, that, those vectors were are typically chosen because it's convenient to express the vectors in R2 using that basis. It's a very nice basis, but that's not the only basis that exists, and in fact any two independent vectors in R2 will any independent two-dimensional vectors in R2 can act as a basis for R2. All right, so notice that I could write this linear combination as a system of equations, and I'll write that as an augmented system, where I have 2 minus 1 is the first column, 3, 1 is the second column, and then AB is the right-hand side, and I just took C1, C2, right? So you think of this as a matrix equation, where C1, C2 is a vector, and this 2 minus 1, 3, 1 is the matrix. Then you have AB is on the right-hand side. If I use Kramer's rule to solve this system of equations, then I see that C1 is this exp expression here on the left, and C2 is this expression here on the right. So any values for A and B, any real values for A and B, are going to result in some kind of solution. So that means that I can find any vector a, b, has, and I can write it as a linear combination of these two vectors, and I have these formulas for finding out what the scaling for these two vectors are. So I either have to contract or expand this vector, or change its direction, it doesn't matter. I know what the scale factors are. I have c1 for this vector and c2 for this vector. So let me give you um, an example. Before, But before I get to that example, let me just point out that the reason we could do this is because u and v are independent of one another. That means the way that we can test that is we can take this determinant and we see that this determinant is not zero. That means that the only way for this determinant to be zero is if this vector, like 3, 1, for example, was a scalar multiple of 2 minus 1, or 2 minus 1 was a scalar multiple of 3, 1, okay, vice versa. So that means if I have u, v span R2 and u, v are independent, they can form a, what we call a basis. That means Whenever you see the word basis, think building block. That means that these vectors can act as, as bricks to build R2. So any vector in R2 can be built using these two vectors. Okay. So I'm just saying that any vector in R2 can be written as a linear combination of u and v. So let me show you an example. Here's 5, 0. So this is what a linear combination looks like. You'll see this oftentimes in your linear algebra texts. And really, that looks like what I have up here. So I just write that as a system, and instead of AB, I put 5, 0 there. So that means I can determine what C1 and C2 are using this formula here. I can just use Kramer's rule. And I will put in 5 for A, and if I do that, I get C1 is 1. If I put in 5 for A here and 0 for B, I get uh, C2 is also 1. So I get C1 is 1 and C2 is 1. Okay, so let me show you geometrically what's happening here. What I'm saying is that here's the vector 5, 0, the red vector. Here's the vector 2, minus 1, and here's the vector 1, 3. I'm saying that this vector, this red vector, can be written as a linear combination of these two vectors. That, that means that this, this red vector can act as a diagonal of a parallelogram whose sides are some scale, some scaling of these two vectors. I might have to shorten them. 
I might have to change their direction, um, but I can't like rotate them. They're just uh, it's anything that's on this any imagine a line going through this vector or a line going through this vector, and then you can just build a bunch of parallelograms. This vector will act as a diagonal for that parallelogram. Here's a picture of it. Since the scale factors were one, the green vectors here that are the scaled blue vectors, um, they actually look just like the blue vectors. And then I can just um, use the parallelogram law and you see that the red vector is now a diagonal of these two. So these vectors span. And you can think of it geometrically. It's a nice term here, right? The, if you think about the, the span of this parallelogram, right? So this vector is in the span of these two. Okay, let's uh, look at another example. In this case, we'll have another vector, minus 2, 2. Let me show you this picture very quickly. Um, I'm using Sage Math Cell to do this. And so, I have to uh, change some things around here. Okay, I've made the changes, and here's what the situation looks like. Okay, so here again is the vector 2 minus 1, and here's the vector 3, 1, and then I have this vector minus 2, 2. Now you might be wondering, well, how am I going to possibly get these? Do, would I have to rotate these vectors? And the, the answer is no. We're going to rescale these vectors. I'll give you the scale factors now. Again, I set up C1U plus C2V is equal to W. W in this case is minus 2, 2. So I just get this system of equations. If I solve the system of equations, I get the scale factors are minus 8, 5 for the 2 minus 1 vectors. So it means I'm going to switch the direction and I'm going to extend it a little bit because 8 fifths is bigger than 1. And then I'll have C2, so this, this is going to shorten this vector, but keep it in the same direction. So let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to change this vector's direction. It's going to go in this direction. It's going to be a little bit longer. And this, and this vector is going to be shortened down to uh, about 40% of its length, so right about there. So let's see what that looks like. And there it is. So minus 8 fifths times this vector, push it, the minus pushes in this direction pushes this vector in this direction, the opposite direction, and the 8 fifths extends it a little bit. This vector gets shortened down to 40% of its length, 2 fifths, and now this vector is the diagonal of this parallelogram, and these vectors, these two vectors here, do in fact span. Act as a span for this vector, so this vector is in the span of these two vectors. And you could do that for any vector in R2. You wanted to pick a vector that went way up here, way down here, doesn't matter, you could always change direction, shorten and lengthen these two vectors, and you can always get that whatever vector you choose to be the diagonal of this parallelogram. So it, these two vectors span R2. And here's all the work for you to take a look at. All right, good luck.